Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming here. Um, I'm not sure where all of you were. Uh, there was a press conference for a general manager announcement a couple of months ago. I, I don't see many guys here, so thanks for showing up today. Um, I, I appreciate it. I know there's a lot of things going on, so so thank you for coming out. Um, as we've we've talked about in, in, in my press conference in the last couple of months, uh, as, as a group and as a club, we're trying to build what I would call a sustainable club here. We're trying to trying to build a culture at this club. Uh, we're, we're we're pushing hard. We're we're making decisions based on that and trying to trying to find some some way here to turn this club around, and and bring it up. And uh, this gentleman that I'll introduce in a few moments here beside me uh, is someone that uh, I'm really excited to introduce to you. So I just want to kind of go through uh, a little bit uh, what we're trying to do. We're trying to build a collaborative club a club that has a defined style of play. Uh, and I've been using this phrase proactive, which I notice now is kind of leaking around the league, It's uh, which is kind of interesting. But it's it, I think that's an easy um, phrase to use for a club, uh, a style of play, sorry, when, when there are people out here uh, that don't necessarily know soccer inside and out, um, uh, like, like us, some of the people in the room and, some, and, and the gentleman beside me, and, and I do. But at the end of the day, I think it gives you a good picture. A fan that's a sports fan can understand what a proactive style means. Uh, you know, it's an aggressive style. It's a style of play where you're on the front foot and you're controlling the game. And I think, uh, as I mentioned before, the gentleman beside me believes in that. That's a style of play that that he goes through. So some of the criteria I kind of wanted to get through a little bit. So one is the culture piece. Uh, I'm a big believer in being a collaborator. Um, uh, as, as some of you know, there's been... Uh, a uh, gentleman, Asher Mendelson, who we announced yesterday as a technical director, and Nick Kova is assistant general manager. These guys are uh, very instrumental in this search. Uh, our owner, Ted Siegel, uh, our vice chairman, uh, Lyle Ayes, uh, President John Walker, uh, and the head of performance, uh, Paul Caffrey. These are all integral uh, parts of this decision uh, and also this search uh, for this candidate. So, we, uh, you know, I believe in collaboration. The style of play we've talked about, a proactive style. Uh, we're also looking, we, one of the things we're looking for is a history of playing young players. Uh, the gentleman beside me has, uh, we can go in that later with some questioning, but there's certainly some players that, that uh, in the soccer community in MLS that he's had a hand on and uh, worked with very closely. That's one. Uh, and then the bigger one that I think a lot of you did is we, or a lot of what we found is when we searched around the world for all these, these coaches, starting to speak to a lot of uh, high potential coaches that we were looking for. Um, is that we found the biggest, biggest issue we had with a lot of these guys that we spoke to was a lack of familiarity with MLS. Well, the gentleman beside me has played 12 years in the league, has been a coach now for a uh, coaching environment for five years. Uh, he's, he's, he's about as long in the tooth in MLS as I am. So he's a guy that's, that's very familiar. And I think what's really important as well is he's a winner. He's won two MLS Cups, three US Open Cups. Uh, he's continually been on teams that have been fighting for championships. And that's the type of person that we wanted to hire. Uh, and then lastly, is we were looking for a, a, an excellent communicator, uh, someone who's bi bilingual, preferably. Uh, I wish my, my, my Canadian English and American English don't count as two. Uh, I try my French. My French is horrible, but I'm working on Spanish. So I'm very fortunate here. I actually believe he's trilingual, if I'm safe to say. Um, but, but that's something what we were looking for and was very important in this search. Um, so. With, with that, I, I fir firstly want to uh, welcome, and I'm going to kind of go out of cue here a little bit. I want to welcome his uh, lovely wife, Monique, uh, his daughters, uh, Clara and uh, Lisi, uh, to here. So welcome to Houston. Uh, I hope you love it here uh, as much as my family has as well. So please reach out if there's ever any questions. Uh, and then uh, secondly, I'd like to introduce the new head coach of Houston Dynamo FC, Paulo Nagamero. You probably already did out most of the speech. Yeah. <laughs> cool. uh, thank you. Um, first of all, I just I would like to thank the ownership, uh, Ted Siegel, uh, the club leadership, John, Lyle, Pat, Asher, for, for the unbelievable opportunity. I'm honored to be the new head coach of Houston Dynamo FC, and I'm really, really looking forward for this new challenge. I would also like to uh, thank my family, my daughters, my wife, and last but not least, the Sporting, Sporting KC organization, Peter Vermees, for giving me the opportunity and for mentoring the list in this past few years. Again, really excited, looking forward to it. 
to rescue the identity of this club and, and embrace that challenge with all my, my, my gain, my will. Thank you for that. We'll transition out of the Q&A portion. We'll start in English. If you'd like to raise or ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll start with Danielle here, the Houston Chronicle. Danielle Lerner, Houston Chronicle. Paulo, you mentioned rescuing the identity of this club. What ideally is the type of identity that you want the Houston Dynamo to have? I would say the same identity that when I was a player, I would come to here and play against the Houston Dynamo, uh, a team that is really difficult to play against, a team that is always on the front foot, a team that is proactive, a team that is aggressive, right? So I think from watching the Houston Dynamo in the last few years, I think uh, we got away from that. And the ideal world, we're going to go back to that and make this place uh, really our fortress. We'll go to Alex next. Uh, Coach, welcome to, uh, to Houston. Um, the collaborative effort, working with Pat, working with the technical director, talk to us about the vision for that, please, Coach. Absolutely. I think it's, I think it's the mo one of the most important things. I think um, I'm a young coach, um, five years being a head coach, and I'm going to need help from all of, of the staff members, all the, all of the club. So to, collaborative is, 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 is easy to say, but it's on a daily basis. That's what we're basically going to need. We need. We're going to need the help from everyone to get the ship going where they, where they need to be. We'll go next to Mark Berman with Fox 26. Hey, Pat. Uh, maybe you could tell us how difficult it was to reach this decision. You said you went all around the world. Maybe tell us how many people you, you considered and how you arrived at, finally arrived at your decision. Yeah, I mean, we considered, we considered numerous. And when I say numerous, probably if you looked at all the resumes and the people that we've talked to, probably over 100. But in terms of the decision, it was very easy. Uh, I think from the first phone call, the Zoom call that we had, of course, with, we're dealing with COVID, so you do Zoom calls to start. Uh, the first time that we spoke to him on, on I remember getting off and, and talking to Nick Koba and saying, oh, I really like this guy. I, I think he fits what we're looking for as a group, uh, what we're trying to be. We're looking for high potential people, people that want to get better in our organization on a constant basis. Uh, that includes myself, Asher, Nick. You know, we have a surrounding myself with people that I think want to get better. Uh, and I know that's what Paulo, Paulo believes in and that's what he's trying to do. So it was, it was a pretty easy decision. No, I wouldn't say we talked to 100 candidates. No, no, no. There were about 100 candidates that we probably looked at in terms of resumes and stuff. But yeah, no, no. Yeah, yes. Yeah, that would be, that'd take a lot of time. <laughs> it did take a lot of time, but not that much time. Up next, we'll go with Sam. Go ahead. All right, my name is Sam, Africa Sports Network. Uh, coach, I'm over oh, here. Sorry. Yeah. Welcome to Houston. Thank you. You know, one thing I will tell you about that the, the fans of this club are very passionate. You know, they love this club. You know, they're very passionate. So my question is this. You seem to be the youngest coach in the club history to sit in that dugout. You know, what does that mean to you? It means just a number of my age because I, think, I believe every coach has their own path. Right, every coach uh, start in a different in a different way. Maybe um, every every single coach has a different path. So for me, it doesn't doesn't mean anything. I mean, uh, I told before, I'm ready for this challenge. I've been with, involved with professional level for the last 20 20 plus years playing and coaching. So um, it's just a number to me. Okay, what what is your attraction to Houston Dynamo? The project? No, the attraction to the project here. What attracted you here? The, the project, the, the new ownership, the new uh, club leadership, right? Uh, all of that was factors on, on my decision to come to Houston. Thank you. We'll get to the journalist on Zoom here shortly. If you have a question for those of you on Zoom, please raise your hand. We'll go with Enrique next. Hello, Coach Enrique Vasquez with the Dynamo Spanish TV. As you look around the league, you see where homegrown players are, are big, whereas the Dynamo has maybe struggled at times developing young players. What, what's, what's the importance that you're going to place on, on being that the Dynamo Academy generate talent year in, year out that you can count on? Yeah, I mean, from, from, 
From what I know and from what I heard and talking to Pat, I think the Academy has made enormous progress for all the years and I really see it as a, as a, a source of, of talent for this country and I think in Houston it's not going to be different, right? We, we're going to assess the Academy players, we're going to assess the players coming through the system and if they're ready to, uh, to, to contribute it to the first team, they will definitely, they're definitely going to be signed. So, but it's a process, right? And, but we we'll definitely be looking at the young players for sure. We'll go to Daniel next, right over here. Getting in here just a couple weeks before training camp starts, how much time have you actually had to, to interact with the team and uh, have you decided when you might be able to announce uh, your assistance? Well, not much time yet. Today, my first day, so hopefully I can, I can uh, be in touch with those players, with our players uh, soon. Uh, we have two weeks until we start preseason, so um, we're planning, we're, we're getting to work, so hopefully we can get this thing going uh, right away. And about the systems, yeah, we've been talking uh, uh, with a couple of candidates and they should be announced hopefully pretty soon, right? Yeah. We're gonna go over to Lester here. Pablo, eh, primero que nada, muchas gracias por el tiempo. Eh, hablando acerca precisamente de, de la identidad que quieres establecerlo, ya tienes precisamente una idea definida de la identidad. El estilo de juego, sin embargo, obviamente vienes de la escuela de Peter Vermes en los últimos años de tu carrera, que tiene un estilo extremadamente definido, muy conocido. ¿Vamos a ver eso mismo acá en Houston o vamos a ver algo diferente? ¿Vamos a ver el estilo de Pablo Nagamura? Quizás un híbrido. Yo creo que vamos a ver el estilo Pablo Nagamura. Uh, no, se dice que no tengo uh, mucha influencia de, de Peter Vermes, estaré mintiendo, porque jugué, jugué cinco años so, en su equipo y entrenar en el segundo equipo de Sporting por cinco años. Entonces, sí, la influencia puede ser que sea grande, pero en la cancha va, va a ver el equipo de Paulo. ¿Y cómo defines el estilo de juego que quieres implementar eh, dentro de la cancha? Precisamente, ¿es un estilo de alta presión? ¿Es un estilo de, de siempre constantemente tratando de llegar al, al arco rival? ¿Cómo lo defines? Sí. Uh, primeramente, sí, siempre el equipo va a ser un equipo que va a ser muy agresiva defensivamente, ofensivamente. Muchas veces sí va a tener alta presión, dependiendo del equipo, puede ser que, que baje un poco, pero es eh, un equipo que va a proponer siempre el partido, que va a ser agresiva, que va a, ser, que va a siempre buscar el gol uh, y controlar la, la pose de la pelota durante el partido. Just a double check, anything else in English before we transition to Spanish, Jose? Jesus Ortiz, R. Esquina. Uh, Paolo, when, when you describe your style, how important is it for you to be able to be bilingual? Pat mentioned trilingual. What three languages do you speak and how important is that not only on the field but also selling the Dynamo brand to the city of Houston? Very important, right? Very important. This is a multicultural city uh, with uh, a big influence on a, on a Hispanic uh, community, so it's really important to speak English, uh, Spanish, and I speak Portuguese too. And to go to your to your comment, uh, we have a lot of Spanish speaking in our in our roster. So to communicate in Spanish and make sure the players understand what we we've been asking to them, it's huge. I think we're going to transition quickly to Zoom, and then we'll come back in Spanish. Uh, for Zoom, we'll start with Victor from the striker. Go ahead. Question for uh, uh, either of you guys. Uh, you know, forgive me if this sounds uh, repetitive, uh, but you know, attacking style, uh, academy, implementing the academy, a bilingual coach. Uh, fans in Houston have seen this before with the prior two coaches, and the roster really is pretty much the same roster that was used in 2021. Where do you, um, where do you all think you can be successful? Where the previous uh, people at the club have not been able to be. Mm -hmm. I believe, I think, has, we have to change the culture a little bit. Like I said before, I think to rescue that identity uh, that Houston had in seven, eight years ago, uh, we need to implement that culture. Is that, is that, is, and that is a process, right? That's not, that's not an overnight project. We need to rescue that, and once we settle that and have a, a 
a good culture in the club. I'm, I'm sure that the pieces that are going to be added on, uh, playing reinforcements, uh, uh, new signings, uh, uh, that will make a team a very competitive team. Up next, we'll go with Andres. Go ahead. Hey, Paolo. Welcome to Houston. Uh, this question goes to uh, Pat. Um, so obviously, you bring in Paolo having uh, compared to at least Tab Ramos last season, way more experience as a coach professionally. And my main question was, what is going to be the difference between bringing Apollo compared to Tab uh, in the sense of developing talent? Yeah, I, I do think uh, there's a history in the league uh, with different types of coaches. Um, you, can, you can look at a coach that's been a professional coach in the professional environment. Uh, I was speaking to a, an MLS coach, and he actually made an interesting point where he said, uh, yeah, I'd take a, a head coach over an assistant coach. And he says, uh, assistant coaches offer lots of opinions, uh, but a head coach has to make decisions. Uh, and that's where I think uh, Paulo uh, stands out. And, and the difference, I think, between if you're trying to compare it to Tab, uh, and this is, I don't want this to be a disrespect for Tab, but it's really about repetitions. I think the, the coaches that have had the youth camps and come in for 10, 12 days, they get 10, 12 days of coaching. And then they go back, they go back to a, a, a office and they plan their next camp. Uh, but when you're living it day to day, when you're in a professional environment, uh, no matter what the level, uh, what, what that does is it gets you repetitions, it gets you thinking at a professional level and you have to do the day to day. And one of the biggest challenges for head coaches in any sport, not just our sport, any sport is managing your athletes. And when you only have to manage them for 10 days, it becomes very difficult, but when you, I mean, sorry, pretty easy in the sense that you can just invite in guys if they don't fit the culture. But when you're trying to develop a culture, you've got to do it uh, step by step, day by day. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons, not, not, I know that's one of the reasons we hired Paulo. And it's because he can communicate with, with people. He's, he's very comfortable uh, in his own skin. He's very comfortable walking up to a player and talking to him because he's lived it. He's been there, he's played at the highest levels. He's played in our league. He understands the travel, he understands everything. So. Uh, I think that's wh uh, why we're attracted to him, and that's why we're really happy to have him as our head coach. All right, up next we'll go with Daniel. Hi, Paulo. Uh, Daniel Sperry with uh, Kansas City Star. Um, just what can you tell us about uh, how, um, how your 10 years, last decade of your playing career and uh, coaching here has been at Sporting? Um, what are you, what are the lessons that you've learned that you're going to take with you into this new role? Um, and then I'll have a follow up as well. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, like I said in the beginning on, on, uh, on my speech, it was like, I'm very grateful for the SKC organization and Peter Vermees. Uh, Peter has been my mentor in the last, especially in the last five years when I became a coach, um, um, learn a lot from him, uh, the way that he deals with players, the way that he sees the game, the way that uh, he manages his daily routine. So um, it was, I'm, I'm grateful. And again, I learn a lot in that organization. So. Yeah, and then just to follow up to that, um, you know, when Peter took over with Sporting, uh, the project um, was, seemed very similar to what the project that you guys are describing ahead of yourselves, changing the culture um, and uh, implementing you know, a, an identity from top to bottom. Um, you know, how heavily are you going to be leaning on him for uh, maybe some advice or uh, at least um, uh, just kind of a sounding board for ideas as you kind of take this big, this, this really big step in your uh, coaching career? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very, very similar to what you just mentioned. It was a SKC uh, a few years back. And again, it's a, it's a long process. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a project and and if I need you to, to call Peter to ask for a few devices, I'll definitely will. Okay, up next, I believe we're going to go with Charles Bohm with MLS Soccer. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. yep. Thank you. Thanks for speaking today. Uh, so this is a question for, for both of you, um, and you've, been, you've talked about this in a couple previous questions, um, but uh, you guys both have, you know, prior destinations that would say have a club with identity, if we're talking about crew, uh, and then Sporting KC, kind of those are places that seem to have a DNA uh, and a track record over the years. What are you bringing from your, your past destinations? What will that 
sort of what we see that we recognize in Houston versus what do you see as differences with the project you're, you're trying to implement now? I mean, it's just to go back to the last question, it's very similar. I think the place that I came from, uh, uh, an organization that has been a winning organization for the last few years that has a very strong culture, uh, a place where I, I was on the inside for 10 years. So I think that level of experience and that level of uh, knowledge uh, to bring here to Houston, I think is going to be huge, and that's what we're going to look into do. Up next, we'll go with Tyler. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. This is Tyler Garrett, Dynamo Theory. Uh, this one's for Coach. When mentioning rebuilding the identity and culture of the club, are there any particular players you're looking to see kind of step up and help bring in that new identity and culture? Well, uh, I know the players from, from watching them. Uh, I don't know them personally yet, so it's, it's, it's a difficult question for me to answer right now. But uh, uh, preseason starts in two weeks, and we will, we will assess that. We're going to establish uh, the standards and the expectations for all of them, and it's, it's almost going to be a fresh start for everyone. So um, uh, I'm excited. I think they should be as well. It's a new start for the club. and. And hopefully we can turn this ship around, like I said again. I believe Victor has a follow-up. Yeah, this question is for Pat Onstead. Um, fans are were wondering, um, they've heard the owner speak about additional resources uh, in the terms of signings. When can, can they expect a bigger signing, perhaps one in this transfer window, a, a bona fide uh, player, um, if you have any information on yeah, that's a good question, Victor. I mean, uh, first and foremost, to Ted, uh, just just to be clear here, Ted Siegel could not make it due to scheduling conflicts. But uh, what Ted has done and has gone on the record, and certainly in all my discussions with him, has he's been uh, uh, very clear that he's willing to spend. Uh, what I, I kind of started out with at the beginning is talking about a collaboration. So uh, we're at a, at a point now with our roster that, uh, in terms of our spend. Uh, the, where it fits, uh, ironically, is that we, it's better for us to spend bigger than it is for us to kind of look in league and look at a salary cap guy. Uh, because if you go after a young youth player slot, it counts significantly less in your cap than it would if I went out and, and signed, signed a, uh, a player that, that would be a roster spot guy. So uh, now at this point, that means you're investing uh, significant money from ownership. For us to do that, that's not something I, I felt comfortable doing without a head coach in place. Didn't make sense that you would go uh, invest significant money, have a new coach come in and say, what are you doing? That's not my type of guy. So what we've done, and this is when Paul has been kind of coy about it so far, but uh, we've been discussing over the last couple of weeks. We've been looking at players uh, in terms of positions we feel we have need, uh, need to. So we're well on our way and well on our path to trying to sign these players. Uh, I'm hoping uh, with everything lines up perfectly that we can have maybe an announcement before preseason starts, but that's obviously only in two weeks' time. But we will definitely be pushing here in the next uh, month or so to try to get some big signings across the line. Thank you for that. I think we'll go over to Spanish. We'll start with Ubaldo. Pablo, saludos. Bienvenido a Houston. Este, ¿Qué hizo esta oferta atractiva y cómo crees que tu experiencia como jugador dentro de esta liga te va a ayudar para ser exitoso en tu primera oportunidad como entrenador dentro de la MLS? Claro, eh, primero el proyecto, ¿no? El proyecto de un, un nuevo dueño, un nuevo eh, líder eh, aquí al melado P. Eh, un proyecto que es muy tenta, tentador porque eh, es, los, los dueños están... Uh, comprometidos con el equipo, están comprometidos a invertir en el equipo, en de hacer un equipo, un equipo competitivo. Eso, eso para mí fue muy importante la decisión. Y segundo, la experiencia muy importante porque yo, yo, yo creo que entiendo lo que es necesario para jugar en esta liga, las cualidades, las, las, la, la mentalidad eh, y Teniendo esta experiencia, creo que ayuda en el proceso de, de captar eh, nuevos talentos o jugadores nuevos o jugadores que vengan a venir al equipo de Houston. Next, we'll go with Lester. Go ahead. Pablo, eh, este es un equipo que no llega a playoffs desde el 2017 eh, y pues obviamente cada año y por el hecho de que malacostumbró a la afición de buena manera en los años anteriores, 
eh, se, existe de alguna manera esa presión o esa, esa petición para que el equipo sea protagonista. ¿Esa es el, la petición para contigo este año desde el principio? Y número uno, número dos, eh, bueno, primero te doy, te doy esa y luego la, la platicamos. Bueno, es, si yo vengo a Houston y yo no quiero ser protagonista, yo no soy probablemente o el entrenador de Houston que tiene que tener. Claro, vamos a tener que ser protagonistas, yo sé que los resultados en los últimos años no fueron buenos, pero tenemos que tener paciencia, tenemos que creer en, la, en el club, en los jugadores, en, en el cuerpo técnico, en los dueños, en los directivos, porque la, ulti, la única manera que vamos a cambiar eso es con resultados dentro de la cancha. Entonces, a creer, paciencia y, y que eso va, eso va a cambiar. Y la segunda pregunta es a, a la afición, que pues obviamente eh, cuando se hizo tu anuncio, habló acerca de la falta de lo que decía Ubaldo, acerca de la falta de experiencia en la MLS. ¿Qué le dices tú a esa afición para de alguna manera suavizar de alguna manera esa, esa, esa percepción en torno a lo que tú traes y lo que vas a poner sobre la mesa con este equipo? Bueno, mira, eh, la manera que respondo es, es, es simple. Eh, yo miro a Bruce Arena, empezó con la cross, ¿no? Y hoy es uno de, de los entrenadores más condecorados de Estados Unidos. Peter Vermees, lo mismo, la, su primer trabajo fue Sporting Kansas City y hoy es uno de los mejores entrenadores uh, del MLS. Muchos, muchos entrenadores que eran asistentes y, y son hoy entrenadores de MLS. Entonces, como dice antes, cada entrenador tiene su, su, su path, cada entrenador tiene su manera de llegar y para mí no es diferente. Yo tuve mi path y yo creo que, que he tenido condiciones de, de liderar, liderar este equipo a un equipo muy vitorioso. Vamos a seguir aquí con Alex. Adelante. Profe, bienvenido ahora en español a, a Houston. Dos cosas, platíquenos sobre la cultura. Un cambio de cultura, como ya mencionó, toma tiempo, paciencia. La pregunta es que también incluye, me imagino, la academia, número uno. Y segundo, ¿qué expectativa tienen ustedes para esta temporada a corto, mediano y largo plazo? Me imagino es ganar un campeonato de la MLS. Bueno, la cultura... Uh, te digo de una manera muy precisa, eh, la, la cultura es, es en, en, en general en el club, no se puede ser lo más en el primer equipo, en el segundo equipo, en la academia, es en, en la directiva, es los dueños y eso creo que, que hay un gran entendimiento entre yo, Pe, en Ted, todos lo, 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 lo creemos que eso es necesario en el club, entonces eh, eso va a ser un cambio o impacto muy profundo dentro de la franquicia de Houston. Uh, a tu segunda pregunta, mira, eh, como dice, es un proceso, ¿no? Es un proceso, puede ser un proceso a largo plazo, pero la expectativa es que a, al final de ese año estamos en playoffs. Esa es la expectativa. Y tú sabes, en, eh, eh, tuviste inúmeras veces en el pasado, a ti mismo el año pasado con Real Salt Lake, un equipo que estaba... Casi, casi muerta hasta la última jornada y llegó al, al final de conferencia. Entonces, la expectativa es que llegamos en playoffs. Vamos a regresar al Zoom, vamos a ir con Laura Gómez. Adelante, Laura. Hola, profe, bienvenido a Houston. Yo sé que ha habido mucha eh, conversación y hablando de que le falta mucho el equipo, pero no sé si has tenido tiempo de analizar y, y de pronto contarnos... Eh, de los jugadores actuales, ¿cuáles son los que te han impresionado y crees que van a ser parte importante eh, de lo que se viene? Sí, mira, yo, yo creo que ya hicimos dos adiciones muy importantes, de dos jugadores experientes, eh, y, y analizando el grupo, te, tenemos muchos jugadores que van a ser mucho, mucho importantes por este año, pero como lo dice antes, es, es, un, es, un, es, un, es un inicio... Es un inicio fresco para todos, uh, una nueva oportunidad de mostrar lo que, por qué están acá en Houston y si quieren estar acá en Houston. Y, y así que vamos a llevar la pretemporada. Con, con el tiempo, con la cultura implementada, con, con, la, con la metodología que yo gustaría de trabajar, vamos a continuar a, a monitorar el elenco y, y si necesitamos adicionar jugadores, vamos a adicionar. I think we have a few more here on Zoom and then we'll wrap up. Vamos a seguir con Leopoldo Mata. Adelante. Profe, bienvenido. 
Gracias. Hace un momento, profe, yo le entendí, lo dijo en inglés, de que le gustó a usted en sus tiempos de jugador cómo jugaba el Dinamo. ¿Pero qué entrenador era en esa ocasión? ¿O si hubo varios entrenadores que usted tuvo la experiencia de enfrentar como contrincante? ¿Se acuerda? Mira, yo que le mencioné, no es la manera que jugaba, era más con la, con lo, con la mentalidad, con la, con la actitud en la cancha. Eh, mira, yo, yo me acuerdo bien que los las equipos de Dominic Kinnear siempre fueron equipos que peleaban mucho y que eran... Uh, muy difícil de jugar contra eso por eso que le, le mencioné entonces la mentalidad es la actitud en la cancha que necesitamos rescatar de los años que, que, que estaban atrás entonces su respuesta sería Dominic Kinnear la, la actitud de los jugadores la mentalidad de los jugadores cuando jugaban con Dominic Kinnear muy bien Profe, y la segunda es se está hablando ahorita de lo que es de exitosa la, la formación que tiene el FC Dallas. Si usted compara lo que conoce con Sporting Kansas y lo que es, no sé cuánto conozca del desarrollo de la academia del FC Dallas, puntos importantes que usted puede resaltar de FC Dallas y puntos importantes que también usted puede resaltar, pero siendo bien específico, profe, en esto de lo que sería Sporting Kansas también. Mira, lo que puedo decir es de Kansas. Yo no conozco mucho eh, la academia y la organización de FC Dallas. Yo nomás conozco de, de jugar contra y de, y de lo mirar en, 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 en partidos. Uh, entonces, te digo que la, la manera de conducir la academia, la manera que es uh, la transición de los jugadores de los 15, de 7 a 20 años, es una transición que el jugador no más se, se preocupa en adaptarla a la velocidad del partido, uh, porque todos, todos los equipos juegan de la misma manera, en la misma, con los mismos principios, con el mismo estilo de juego. Entonces, si, si yo tenía una cosa para hablar, sería eso. Gracias, profe. Gracias. Vamos a terminar con Nico Moreno. Adelante. Sí, muchas gracias. Eh, para el profesor, por favor, eh, me gustaría que elabore en español. Sí, ¿qué, ¿Qué clase de, de, de estilo o, o de propuesta va a tener este equipo del Dynamo? ¿Qué, ¿Qué se ve usted haciendo en el campo en cuanto a un equipo sea de posesión, de transición? Eh, o, ¿O va usted a evaluar un poco más el plantel antes de elegir el estilo de juego que tendrá su equipo? Gracias. Mira, eh, yo soy entrenador que le, me, me gusta a mi equipo que, que le jueguen con la pelota, con la pose. Pero eh, tenemos que ser una equipe balanceada también porque tenemos que, que ser buenas en transiciones, en contras. Depende de, de, cada, de cada equipo que vamos a jugar contra. Pero sí, soy, soy un entrenador que, 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 que le gusta mucho jugar con la pelota, un, 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 un entrenador que, le, que, que gusta que el equipo sea agresivo, principalmente uh, adelante. Y, y sí, eh, esto va a ser un proceso, necesitamos analizar y asesar los jugadores que tenemos la, en, la, en el equipo y, y adaptar con, con la manera que yo me gustaría jugar. Thank you for that. I think we'll wrap up with that. Uh, these gentlemen and additionally a few special guests will be available out here for additional interviews. Prior to that, we're going to take a quick photo here with the Dynamo jersey. We're going to move this table first though. We're going to start to our right, Pat and Paolo. If you guys could look to your right, straight on this end. Yep. You guys are good. Let me know. Okay, we're going to go towards the middle now. Let me know if you guys are good straight ahead. We're going to go to our left now. Let's turn that jersey over, please. Turn it around. Same thing, we'll start to our right. <coughs> Let's go ahead and go towards the middle.
Let's wrap up to our left.